Happy Thursday. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to tell you just before we went on the air there, Bill, uh, we are up to, uh, if my count is right, this is 91, actually. Episode wow. 91. I went through, now I know you counted on the, the website. I'm going to have to go back there and double check, but I went through the hard drive of all of the shows and there are 90 shows on our hard drive. Uh, so, because I have a hard drive just dedicated to these these shows, because they take up a lot of space. Uh, so we've got ninety shows. So this will be show number ninety one. I knew you'd want to know that. I know you're making notes right there too. Yep. So, yep, yep, yep. Way cool. And hey, everybody, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, all of these, if you're new to the podcast, new to the channel, jump over to investorguyspodcast.com. Like, subscribe. And then just uh, scroll back through. There's a, a podcast tab on your right. And scroll back through it. All of the shows are listed there. So go back. And, um, you know, last week we made a reference to some of, a couple of our numbers show. Uh, 50,000 to millionaires, one of them. And uh, the other one was 30,000 plus percent ROI. Uh, so go back and uh, look at those two. If you go back and listen to... Uh, episode number 90 uh go back and look at that um which was last um what is tuesday today? that was tuesday that was tuesday today. and we talked about how to make ultimately 634 million dollars in 10 years best without winning the lottery without winning the lottery uh and, and that was based on an actual property that i was looking at over the weekend that uh i same types of properties I'm moving on all, all those are real actual numbers and by the way in case you didn't catch that show yet I am making a offer on that property based upon the purchase price of the property I'm not having to to knock them down on the price I'm not having to go back and forth and dicker I mean I'll probably offer a little bit less because that's what's expected but I'm not going to go crazy I'm not gonna say oh I'm, I, I got offer 20 percent less or I got offer 30 percent less right yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a few thousand dollars less than what they're asking um, that typically doesn't happen in a market as hot as we are in. And a lot of people make that mistake where they, they go by the formulas that we teach and they think it fits all properties at all times in all markets. And those people aren't buying anything right now because they're finding out they're, they're getting laughed at by agents and agents are refusing to, um, be right. just refusing to make their offers and and that that, that leads us kind of i'm going to do the slow lead actually into what we're going to talk about today uh, everything is not all hard and fast we have different strategies and based upon what our strategy is if we can make money if i can make on that particular property if i can make 140 percent making a full price offer on that property why am i going to worry about losing that property over underbidding uh, somebody else it, it's yep. just and, and it wasn't a bid it's, it's it's on the mls so why am i going to do that so it's absolutely key to understand what strategies we can utilize and getting into our topic for today what markets we're going to be investing in yep. and what strategies apply to those markets so today we're going to talk about the top 10 hottest markets right now as it says in forbes okay and, and now, literally this is uh, just a few hours old and i was looking at uh, there are five different reports uh, in this mass report i've always enjoyed the the stuff uh, I, I love business reading I, I stay away from the political stuff because as you've heard i can get fired up over that <laughs> so i stay away from that stuff but one of the things we were um, talking about, you know, why would I want to miss a property by going in and, and haggling too much in a market that is crazy like it is right now? And one of these top 10 lists and the current um, issue is the number of days from the it's days on market. So literally from the time that it was put on the market, how long did it take for it to go under contract? And so we're talking about for an entire market. We're not talking about just an, a specific subdivision 
or a specific house. We're talking about an entire metropolitan area. So uh, right now, you'll get a kick out of this. Columbus, Ohio, Raleigh, North Carolina, and Ogden, Utah are tied for number one. Wow. With, from the time that these properties are put on the market, this is across their entire market. All three of those cities uh, are under contract in five days. So whatever, that, that's the average for the entire market. That's the thing I want you to keep remembering. Then when we bump up to six days, Denver, Charlotte, Cincinnati, and Kansas City, Indianapolis, Austin, and Memphis. And that rounds out the top 10. So no Florida markets and only one Texas market, which was shocking to me. Which is awesome, um, yeah. That both of those uh, were in there. But so five or six days is all property is lasting in the top 10 markets as far as that one stat goes, days on market go. Uh, and so just uh, that lets you know how insane. These are all what's referred to if you're a financial person as year over year numbers. Uh, so it's not the last, it's the last 12 months. It's not a calendar year. It's the last 12 months. So it's a rolling number all the time. Uh, so if they did it again next month, the cities might change, the numbers might change, but as of this moment, uh, that's how fast um, the market is moving. Now, and you know what? Surprise, but not surprising. I mean, the only one really that, that surprised me on that whole list was Indianapolis. Um, Raleigh is part of Research Triangle. So is Charlotte. Um, we've both been we've both been investing in Raleigh, Durham, Charlotte for for decades that is a hot market it's going to continue to be a hot market uh it is a strong financial district charlotte and raleigh both have capitals for or sorry capitals there uh, corporate offices for uh, many of banking institutions lots and lots of colleges in that research triangle in fact they are research colleges that's why it's called research triangle uh ogden utah isn't too far from salt lake city salt lake city is a is a growing area still in fact salt lake city is one of the one of the cities that's on most investors radar because it is a city that is it's got a lot of things going on uh some of the other cities there are uh, columbus ohio columbus is absolutely growing they've got a lot of programs uh that are inviting growth as is cincinnati uh greater cincinnati area a lot of people don't realize it includes louisville kentucky uh it is it, it actually just spills out over three different yeah. states it is ohio it is kentucky and it is uh, indiana and it's um, it crazy. is a huge metro area if you've never been there uh uh, the first time uh, I went to Louisville, uh, I ended up driving over to Cincinnati, and I was like, "This is nuts! This how there it's it's almost like you don't notice the signs." Uh, so it is break time. We're going to come back with some more of these top ten hottest markets in the country. What that means to you and I as real estate investors. So hang around. We'll be right back with more Investor Guys podcast. 11 months out of the year, Bill and I host real estate buyers events in cities like Cleveland, Ohio, where we ourselves invest and see great returns. We show investors the types of strategies we're using, the types of properties we're using. We introduce them to people here on the ground and the resources that they can use to get started right away. Day four of this event, we're actually touring properties and making offers on properties. This event was designed to put properties in your portfolio right away. High performing properties. Read more about the Real Estate Buyers event. Get registered. We'll see you at the next event, realestatebuyersevent.com. My name is Kevin Mills. I have put together the absolute most comprehensive and complete real estate investor training program that I am going to stand behind it with a double year tuition back guarantee if it does not make you a millionaire. The program is called Millionaire Blueprint. In fact, we call it the Guaranteed Millionaire Blueprint. If you take this course and you follow exactly what we teach you in this course, I guarantee that you will be a real estate millionaire or I will give you double your tuition back. Read more about our guarantee, read more about this program, and even sign up for the next event at 
www.guaranteedmillionaireblueprint.com. That's guaranteedmillionaireblueprint.com. All right, and we are back with our second segment on the show about the 10 hottest cities, according to Forbes. Uh, and we've been talking about how, how surprising, yes, but, but not surprising as well. And the other thing we have to look at is, okay, now, Nashville was, in one, was one of those cities that was listed, correct? No. No? I Nashville, Knoxville? So. No, no Tennessee cities? I thought there Memphis. was a Tennessee city. Memphis. Memphis, okay. Memphis was number 10. Uh, U-Haul released last week um, a report saying that more trucks have been rented from California to Tennessee than any other state in the union. So, uh, cursory, if we're looking at that information, okay, we're going to say more people are moving from California to Tennessee. Now, we also know that Boise, Idaho is exploding because there are Californians moving there. We know that Austin, Dallas, Houston exploding because there's Californians moving there. Are more Californians moving to tech, sorry, to Tennessee than we realize? Maybe, maybe not. A lot of people move themselves with U-Haul trucks. They also move themselves with rider trucks and dozen other companies. And a lot of comp a lot of people pay to have somebody just come pick up all their stuff and move their stuff for them. Um, I would say that people who are making a cross country trip, probably 75% of those people, and this is just, I'm just guessing, I, this isn't a statistic I pulled anywhere. 75% um, of those people probably use a moving company to move everything across the, across the country. I, I know that that's the best idea. I didn't do that myself uh, just because I had a different strategy, but uh, I, I know a lot of people I would rather not have to put it all into a truck and drive cross country on their own, dragging all their possessions on a trailer behind them and, and, and you know, in a truck. All data, though, that we can look at to get us pointed at some different cities and different areas to invest in. Now, I'm not saying go on this list and say, OK, well, I'm going to start buying up in in in. Memphis, because that's where people are moving to. Start looking at Memphis. Start looking at what the growth rate is of Memphis. Start looking what the at the job market not, is. Not just this month. Start looking at what the last six months were. Start looking at projected numbers. What are the next six months going to bring? Um, don't just rely upon this data. Excuse me, alone. I might breakfast there. Speaking up, but <laughs> so but good stuff for uh, for a show today. What's that? But good stuff for a show today. Absolutely. Which brings us to another point. We are always telling you, you do not have to invest in your own backyard. A lot of people will say you should start in your own backyard. You should start where, you're, where you live. You should start local. You should start this. You should start that. And you know what? Depending upon your strategy, that is a good idea. If you are going to be doing a flip, it is probably better that you start in your own local area because you're going to know the market. You're going to have a better handle on uh, who you want so to deal with. You're going to have a better handle yeah. on being able to go and inspect what's being done, the work that's being yeah. done. Uh, however, if you're looking at cash flow properties or passive investments of some sort, uh, absolutely go ahead and start looking at other markets. And that was going to be one of the show ideas that I was going to suggest for today. Maybe we'll do it next week is yeah. the different the different strategies that are available to real estate investors and the different reasons why we invest. OK, um, a lot of people will purchase homes. And this, this used to amaze me when I lived in California. A lot of people considered themselves investors and they were buying homes in California. And to me, I purchase a property based upon the return that I get. These people were buying properties just because they wanted to own something in California. That was their investment. They wanted to own something in California. Um, different reasons for investing. Are they an investor? Not, not, not my kind of investor, but can I tell them they're not investing? Maybe they have a different purpose than I understand. Maybe that they're not a professional. Yeah. You know, what's that? They're not, a, they're not a professional. They're not a pro. It's not what they do for a living. No, but I literally, and you've probably run into these people. I literally know people who just purchase properties in California. They don't even necessarily put tenants in them. They don't even necessarily live in them themselves. They're just buying up properties in California so that they can have properties in California because to them, that is the hottest market or was the hottest market at the time. And they just wanted to own properties there. Uh, so didn't make sense to hot, me. Speaking of hot, speaking of there is uh, another section of our topic for the day 
this is the rolling last 12 months rolling the top 10 markets with the largest percent of increase in the last 12 months. Okay. So Boise, we were talking about Boise before we got on there. Boise, top in that list. Prices in Boise have gone up 27.7% in one year. That is huge. And I know people, I know people in Boise who've lived in Boise their entire life or lived there for the last 20 years. And they are cursing the people who are moving there from California for any number of reasons, including cash heavy, politics, overpay. Yeah. yeah. I just, they, they have a lot of cash because they sold their properties in California and they had a lot of equity in those properties and they're able to pay cash and able to bid prices up on properties. So they've driven the demand up for property. Uh, they've driven the demand up for everything, which means they've increased the cost of, of local goods in the area. They've increased a lot of, de- and I'm not even going to get into what they say about the way Californians are and, and the, the personal attitudes they have about Californians personally. Um, but yeah, that is one of the markets that is blowing up. Now, just because they hate Californians, should we not invest there? No. I mean, it's it's a market that's blowing up. Would I invest in a market that's 27% over what it was last year? Depends. If I keep seeing that movement going, and if it's going to be another 25% over what it is this year, then absolutely. Uh, they're, they're, that's an appreciation strategy right there. Could I put tenants in a property and make money because the demand for housing is now up in Boise, Idaho? Absolutely, 100%. Because you know what? I happen to know they're building like crazy in Boise, Idaho because they can't keep up with the demand. That means there are people who are going to be living in apartments, whether they just live in apartments all the time or they're living in an apartment waiting for a regular house. Uh, Demand is going to be up for rentals. Lots of things to look at. And again, strategies are going to be different based upon what we are looking at and where we are looking at. I'm going to let you jump in real quick, Bill, and then I was going to talk about Memphis because I actually know a lot of people in Memphis and a lot of people here from Memphis who want to go back to Memphis or the Tennessee area in general. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in with a break. It is break time, and when we come back, we will finish uh, the top 10 hottest on percent of change year to year, which is just – 27.7% in one year is crazy, Uh, but Boise is not alone. We'll tell you where else uh, is just on fire hot, uh, and we'll get into a couple of other stats as soon as we come back. For more Investor Guys podcast, thanks for hanging. GuaranteedMillionaireBlueprint.com. That's GuaranteedMillionaireBlueprint.com. You owe it to yourself to go there and check it out. If you are ready to become a real estate investor millionaire, like million dollars profit cash flow in your pocket every single year or more, GuaranteedMillionaireBlueprint.com. While you're there, check out the guarantee. Yeah, that's right. There is a guarantee that if you take this program and you follow what you learn in this program, you will become a millionaire. In fact, I'm going to return double your tuition back if this program doesn't make you a millionaire. Check it out. GuaranteedMillionaireBlueprint.com. That's GuaranteedMillionaireBlueprint.com. Once a month, with the exception of December, Bill and I go to markets where we have experience and we host a real estate buyer's event. These are markets that have great return potential for your real estate portfolio. We're going to show you the properties that we buy. We're going to show you where to buy, where not to buy, the strategies to use to make great income from these properties. We're also going to show you resources and individuals here on the ground that you can use to start building your team so that you can repeat this process over and over. The real estate buyers events are designed to put high performing properties in your portfolio right away. If you're interested in hearing more about the real estate buyers event, realestatebuyersevent.com. That's realestatebuyersevent.com. Read more about the events, check out the schedule and register. We'll see you there. Now we're back and uh, go ahead, Bill, tell us what the rest of those cities were on that list. (laughs) So these are, again, these are uh, percent of change year to year, the top 10 markets 
Yeah, so how much they've gone up in one calendar year, or excuse me, one rolling year, not a calendar year, a rolling year. So he said Boise was up 27.7. They had the list. Uh, a surpriser for me, uh, because it's on the East Coast, Stanford, Connecticut, up 22.3%. Uh, Austin, no real surprise, up 19.8%. Uh, Wichita, Kansas, uh, up 177 uh, And then... Another surpriser because it is also in Connecticut, New Haven, Connecticut, up 16.7. And then we got a couple of Utahs. We have Ogden, Utah at number six, Provo, Utah at number seven. Um, Both of those coming in, uh, one uh, Ogden coming in at 16.7 and Provo coming in at 16.6. Allentown, PA. Uh, So, uh, Coming in at 16.4, that's a little bit of a surprise for me. Uh, Winston-Salem, so we, we, we talked about Charlie, Winston-Salem is on this list, 15.8%, and Dayton, Ohio. So Ohio has had three really good uh, entries. So uh, again, shocking that only one Texas city made the list and no Florida cities made the list because as a state overall, and, and they did not rank the states as the overall states, much hotter markets across the state, both in Florida and in Texas. But uh, yeah, so that's that. And then uh, the thing that, that uh, everybody freaks out about in the investor world is inventory. Yeah. What drives the prices up like this is a lack of inventory. The reason Boise, Ohio is going, uh, Idaho is going crazy is because all those Californians are trying to make sure that they run out all the conservatives out of Boise. I mean, uh, are moving to uh, Boise and what's happening there is that inventory is evaporated. That's why those prices are jumping like they are. So uh, let's take a look at the, uh, percent of change of inventory. So all of these inventories are, are they're going to be down this much uh, rolling last 12 months. And uh, Boise was right back there at number one. They have 58.1% less available housing today than they had 12 months ago. That's significant. That's more than half of their That's market. Crazy. That is more than yeah. half of the city. Is, is now not available in housing. So most of these, um, and, and it's not half of the city. Half of the available less inventory. Than half of what was available last year right. for sale. So right. in the entire city, half of the available inventory. Yeah. So uh, coming in at number two, Provo, Utah, down 57.2%. So this, this list is a little similar, but it's got uh, some surprises on it. One you'll really love here. Raleigh, North Carolina, down 54.4. Akron, Ohio, uh, down 50.6. And your hometown, Cleveland. Uh, actually, Cleveland I, actually down, my hometown is Akron. I invest in Cleveland, but oh, my okay. hometown is Akron. Yeah. So Cleveland is down 46.2. Uh, another surpriser to me, Jackson, Mississippi, down 45.8%. Columbia, South Carolina, 453 Jacksonville, Florida, there's your good Florida town, 45.1%. Ogden, Utah, uh, 45 on the button. And then um, this little small conglomeration, Northport, Sarasota, Bradenton, Florida, uh, down 44.4%. So if they do this again next quarter, uh, likely many of the cities that we see on this particular list will be replacing cities that are on the price appreciation list. Because these two, uh, if they're not identical, they're going to be very close to it. Uh, and I would say the percentage availability is a lagging indicator uh, compared to the uh, price increase. So these cities will be reflected. Uh, if they aren't on that price indicator list, they will be uh, the next time. And the other thing too, is we have to take other things into account. Like I can tell you from, from personal experience with Akron and Cleveland and some of the other Ohio cities, uh, 
the reason a lot of the inventory is down is there's a lot of people not moving out of those places because oh, yeah. they're happy there. Yeah. Um, they are perfectly happy with the way their economy is going. They're perfectly happy with their politics. They're perfectly happy with the way things are going. They're just not putting those houses up for sale also, yeah. which affects your inventory. Um, we talked about Connecticut earlier. A lot of New Yorkers are moving out of Connecticut, or sorry, are moving out of New York and they're moving to Connecticut because it's right there. They're also yeah. moving to Rhode Island. They're also moving to Pennsylvania. Allentown caught me by surprise. Um, but they're moving and they don't want to move that far. They want to be close enough to still get back. Uh, you can catch a train, on the train from New York City pretty easily to either of those cities that you mentioned. Um, it, it's just so many factors to look at. But really what we need to remember is we're not locked down. Our, our feet are not cemented to where we are as far as investing. Both Bill and I invest in different markets. Uh, I, As Bill mentioned, I invest in Cleveland. I love investing in Cleveland. I used to invest in Akron, in fact, a lot. Uh, I used to do a lot of student housing until uh, the university ended up exercising eminent domain and, and taking over that entire area and building something else. Uh, another story for another time. But there, there's no reason that says, depending upon what strategy we want to utilize, that we have to be investing where we live. I happened to move to an area from where I did not invest, which was Southern California, to an area where I had been investing for over 30 years, which was South Florida. Uh, I didn't have to move here to continue to invest. I've been investing here for 30 years, which made me realize this is where I wanted to be. Uh, Bill has been in Texas for 20 years plus. Uh, 35. 35. Yeah, and he uh, he invests in other markets as well. Bill will even do flips in other markets. I, I've, I've heard stories of him doing flips in, in Las Vegas and other markets. No reason you are stuck where you are. Start using information like what Bill is providing today uh, as a indicator to start looking at other markets and see what strategies are going to work in other markets. And I can tell you for sure, the strategy that's going to work in Cleveland, Ohio is not the strategy you're going to use when you're using Boise, Idaho. The strategy you're looking at in Boise, Idaho is going to be very different than what we do in Research Triangle. Okay, uh, What we do in Jackson, Mississippi I have no idea, but, <laughs> but it's just houses, brother. It, yeah, there's strategies out there. What I'm saying is, is there's, there's, there's good strategies that are, are that make more sense. Um, Birmingham, Alabama, for example, great, great market to pick My up for pick up foreclosures. There's a lot of foreclosures in Birmingham, Alabama, and it is still a strong rental market in Birmingham, Alabama. So pick up rental rental. Sorry, pick up. Uh, rehab properties in Birmingham and turn them into rental properties. That's a great strategy for Birmingham, Alabama. That's a great strategy for other cities as well. Like I said, I just, I've never done anything in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, I'll be the first one to admit it. Uh, so I don't know anything about it. I'm not saying it's not a great market. What I'm saying is if I was going to invest in Jackson, Mississippi, I need to do some homework and I need to figure out what I was going to do, what my strategy there was going to be. Bebop record great, job. great stuff. Great I stuff, Bill. I used to Bill. do uh, concerts in Jackson. Oh, yeah. Back to, yeah, right out of college. I promoted Harry Chapin and BJ Thomas, and Jackson was on uh, my little sister city list of cities that I would do. I had about uh, six cities that I did all through the Southeast every year, and uh, Jackson was one of them and promoted uh, with uh, Bebop Record Shops there, which the guy was pretty cool. So, hey, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, Kevin, I just, we eat this stuff up, man. Um, if you don't like this kind of stuff, maybe real estate's not for you. Uh, because if uh, you're not just keenly into what's going on in the real estate market, how does that affect me? What strategy should I be using? Is there a particular tactic with this strategy that makes more sense in a, one market as opposed to another? And as you mature in the business, you will start investing into other markets and you'll start investing into other types of real estate. Uh, if you start out just doing flips or wholesales or whatever, you'll end up doing other types of real estate as you grow because it is a natural 
progression of you as an investor. It doesn't mean you'll stop doing those other things. It means that you'll bring another um, piece of strategy into your business. And so when you've been around uh, like Kevin and I have, and you've both been around for uh, 30 plus years, you're gonna, you'll get to a point where you can look at uh, all kind of different property and probably have some experience in it. And if I don't, I can call Kevin and he probably does. And same thing, vice versa with him, because we just, you get to that point of, well, gee, man, maybe I can get a better rate of return here doing this master lease uh, on this commercial building. Maybe I can get a better rate of return if I'm flipping this piece of land. Uh, if you understand the strategy uh, and then the tactics that go with that strategy for all different types, you're always in a position because, look, the real estate market's going to crash sometime. It, it just is. Um, when? Well, it may be when California is empty and New York is empty before it does, but it's going to happen. But you know what? Uh, if you think of the real estate market as balance scales, uh, anytime the market is down, there's another segment of the market that is just getting hotter and hotter and hotter. But you got to understand those things. You have to understand how they react to each other. So when the flip market uh, starts getting really soft, you'll see that the rental market is just hotter and hotter and hotter. And it's a natural, they go hand in hand, but for different reasons. So uh, join us every week. We'll uh, do our dead level best to keep you abreast of what's happening in the market. And you get some great Florida, uh, California, Ohio, uh, and other parts as well, uh, insights at Vegas uh, from Kev. You get Texas and, and Vegas uh, from me and some, uh, I got some South Carolina stuff and some Alabama stuff as well and Florida. So you'll get, uh, you'll get different insights of different parts of the country and how the national real estate market is affecting you and things to be on the lookout for. Uh, we did a tax show and, and how that's going to impact the real estate market. And, and look, you got to have some investment real estate right now. Inflation is about, uh, it's, it's happening. You see it happen. Uh, all you have to do is um, no further than your local gas pump. And you, you see, uh, I don't know, two bucks, buck and a half up from just since Biden's been in office, which was, uh, he's been in office about 62 years now. Oh, it only seems that way. Um, it's been in office since January 20th. So this long as compared to when it, how long he's going to be. Uh, and you look at Two the more damage. days is actually 100 days. Yeah. So you, you more days is 100 the, more days. the damage that's been done to our economy and to your checkbook, your bank account, your pocketbook, that's not going to change. It's only going to get worse. You have to have something to help offset that. One of the things that helps offset that greatly is investment real estate. Absolutely. Because the real estate market from a rental standpoint is going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. From a Section 8 standpoint, it's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. And you're going to have, uh, for a while, we're going to continue to have some incredible flip markets, um, just like we were talking about, because of the exodus of some of the high uh, exodus states, uh, California and New York specifically, but also Jersey and Illinois, uh, where people and are Michigan. just going... Uh, just going, hey, I'm fed up with this. Uh, um, if you are one of those people that you are relocating from uh, a blue state to a red state, please let me implore you. Uh, when you do that, leave those attitudes there. The reason the red state is attractive to you is because we don't have insane taxation. But if you bring in the same ideas that you had in the blue states, we'll end up turning blue at some point, um, and I'm kind of turning blue already, but not from a Democrat standpoint. For other reasons, I'm holding my breath as I'm turning blue. <laughs> so uh, a little sidebar humor there. Uh, so make sure that uh, you think about what made it attractive for me to move to Florida? What made it attractive for me to move to Texas or wherever you happen to be moving to? And uh, I have a buddy that just moved here from California a few months ago. And, and he said, I said, why did you move? He said, quite frankly, I simply couldn't afford to live in California any longer. And so as soon as we started talking politics, oh, no, I love Biden. I, I voted Democrat. I'll always vote Democrat. And I'm like, dude, then what you left 
you're going to try to turn this into what you left. And so I, I, I just implored him. I said, just think about it. Use a little common sense. Why would I tell people I escaped? I tell people I escaped. They're like, why'd you move to yeah. California or move from California? I like, you know what? I didn't move. I, I escaped. I got out of there as quickly as I could with what I had left of my sanity. Uh, it's, it's Way not past. that we couldn't, af- we could afford to live there. We just couldn't yeah. take it anymore. It, it's just, it's, it's, it's insane to pay so much more for things you don't need to pay for. It's insane to have to have your life regulated the way that they, they do in California. So we're quick- going to be investing in real estate to offset the future taxes that are coming. You, you've been told they're coming. Uh, the administration's told you they're going to do it. Uh, I think we've started to see the tip of the iceberg of the taxation that's going to be happening. So get you something to offset. Investment real estate is primary. Uh, it's one of those great primary examples of being able to protect your wealth and offset the increase in pricing. Yeah. And if you want to be, Bill mentioned this earlier in this segment, if you want to be involved in real estate, but maybe you just don't want to be out there buying doors, you don't want to be out there flipping, you want to be willing, take your money and stake other investors. Use it to provide loans to other investors. It is a better return than you're going to get if you're leaving it in the bank. It's a better return than you're probably going to get if you're putting it against stocks and bonds and everything else. And it is more secure. It is more stable. So if you don't want to be out there actually purchasing doors, actually going through MLS, actually doing all of this, take your money and use it to secure your future in real estate by funding other real estate investors and, and real estate purchases. Real estate can make you money in so many different ways. It makes us more money, Bill and I, by actively being an investor, by actively purchasing doors. Uh, it makes many people rich. It makes many banks rich by providing loans. So we have gone way over, as always. Uh, thank you for joining us. This was episode number 92, or was it 91? 91. I'm sorry. 91. 91. Episode number 91. Thanks for joining us. We will see you back here on Tuesday. Don't forget to share us with your friends. Absolutely. Uh, Refer us, uh, like us, catch us on your favorite podcast channels, all that other great stuff. If we had merch, we'd tell you to buy our merch, but we don't. Maybe we should get some uh, Investor Guys podcast cups or something. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Thanks for supporting us. We will see you soon. Have a great week and happy investing. Thanks, everybody.